According to our scouts, we were supposed to outnumber the enemy three to one, yet this rain of arrows would suggest otherwise. There was no way such a small force could lock down an entire battlefield like this. At least that's what I thought, until I saw the monsters we were facing for what they truly were. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where I, your host, Dungeon Dad, dig through old versions of D&D and other tabletop role-playing games to bring old creatures that have been forgotten by time and game developers to light for you to use in your current 5th edition D&D campaign. Today we are going back to the halls of 3rd edition yet again to the Monster Manual 3 to bring about a demonic creature known as the Arrow Demon. These guys are about the same size as your average human except they do in fact have 4 arms and are keen on using those arms to wield 2 big longbows at the exact same time. And not only are they making 2 longbow attacks every turn but they also have a slew of skills and abilities to complement that quite well. So today I'm going to talk about just exactly what these guys can do in combat, some changes I've made from the base creature to make them more in line with the design philosophy of 5th edition, and of course some plot hooks and ways that you can actually use this creature in your 5th edition game. So prepare to fight in the shade because it is time for... So as I briefly mentioned, these guys are medium sized and of course with their four arms in their most basic and kind of useless form, they are able to make four claw attacks every turn of course. However, they don't want to be making claw attacks because they want to be using each of those two sets of arms to be wielding a bow and doing lots of ranged archery attacks and maneuvers. And like many other demons and just magical creatures in general, these guys have magic weapons, so while their weapons themselves may not be magical, any weapons they are using can bypass magical resistance, which is always helpful. Now as you would probably expect, these creatures can use their longbows once each round, so they get two attacks at two different creatures, the same creature, whatever they want to do, they get two different ranged attacks they can use every single round. And that idea is basically what sits at the center of this creature, is just how many ways can we make those ranged attacks interesting without going overboard. One thing it's also worth mentioning as well is because these guys have this otherworldly strength and the body to use it, they are equipped with large longbows. So they're using longbows that are designed for creatures one size category bigger than themselves, so they're doing a little bit of extra damage there. They also don't have disadvantage if they're making a ranged attack within five feet of an enemy, and they can also use their bows to make opportunity attacks against enemies that are trying to run past them. Another ability this creature has, which a lot of demons used to have in older versions of the game, is the capacity to summon 1d6 dretches to its side. Now if you're familiar with a lot of the monsters from older versions of D&D, you'll know that that used to be a thing that pretty much all demons can do, which is why they were so dangerous to summon, because if you had one, it could summon another, which could summon more, which could summon more, and it would just create this cascading effect of demons summoning other demons, which is terrible. Not only was it horrifying, it was kind of cumbersome in a way, but because Dretches and none of the other demons really have that ability anymore, I feel a little bit more safe about giving this creature the ability to summon Dretches because Dretches are very weak and they don't really do much. And I do feel that this ability is somewhat essential for this creature and here's why. Like I said, Dretches are fairly weak, but these Dretches that are being summoned aren't being summoned to do actual damage. They're basically just meant to get in between the Arrow Demon and its enemies so that the Arrow Demon can sit in the back and just snipe at its enemies with its longbows every round without having to worry about people getting up in its face at least as easily. And to aid in its elusive nature, the Arrow Demon can also cast Dimension Door at will. Now this of course costs an action, but it will allow the creature to teleport up to 500 feet to another space that it can see. Huge emphasis on that last part by the way, because what makes Dimension Door not as good as it seems at first glance is the fact that you can only teleport to somewhere that you can see. So being able to teleport 500 feet is great, but it's not as great when you're in a 100 by 100 room and you can't see outside because there are no windows. Also, it is using its action to do this, so it doesn't want to cast Dimension Door, but if it absolutely has no other options, or it's pinned down, or has an opportunity to get to a good vantage point, then it will absolutely make use of this ability to escape. These guys do of course have dark vision as well, but they've only got dark vision up to 60 feet, so if you're using this as an encounter underground, 
its dimension door capabilities are also going to be a lot more limited. So that's just something to really keep in mind when you're running this creature. I think these guys are really neat flavorfully and that kind of sums up basically what we find in the book. But looking at this, I felt there was a bit of potential to tweak things and make it a bit more interesting for 5th edition. So let's try and do that and take a look at some... So one of the biggest mechanics included with 5th edition that everyone kind of universally seems to love is advantage and disadvantage. So I was trying to think of a way to implement that with the arrow demon and give it a few different abilities that might make sense both mechanically and flavor wise. So as always every turn it gets its two regular arrow shots that's fine. But I also added in an ability called symmetrical shot where if this creature uses both of those arrow attacks against the same creature it has advantage on those attack rolls. So it's limiting itself in the fact that it can only shoot at one thing this turn but it's much more likely to hit with both of those attacks because it only has to focus on one target. Alternatively, I thought it would be kind of cool if these guys had something that played with the disadvantage mechanic. So they also have an ability where they can essentially fire a volley where they're just taking like four arrows from their quivers in each hand and knocking them into their bows and just firing a huge swarm of arrows at a 20 foot radius. And essentially what this allows them to do is make a bow attack against all creatures in a 20 foot radius but they do so at disadvantage because they're not really aiming, they're just firing a bunch of arrows and hoping that in that small area one of them hits. So depending on the battlefield and how things are positioned and how it's prioritizing its targets, it might open up with a few volleys and then later on move on to symmetrical shots when it's trying to take down a specific target, all the while throwing in some regular bow attacks in between. I think that makes this creature a little bit more engaging and just a bit more interesting to interact with on a combat level. But if you disagree, feel free to not include those abilities, but I think it's just that little extra spin required on this creature to make them a more memorable encounter. And speaking of encounters, let's take a look at some... So as with most demons, there's a ton of different ways that you can use this guy. I mean, the most upfront and obvious thing is that these guys make great denizens of the abyss. So if you have an adventure taking place on any of the outer planes, really, but specifically the abyss or any of the lower planes that are out there in the multiverse, these guys can make great additions to pretty much any encounter that involves demons. They'd make great additions to a big demon lord's army as well. And if you happen to be running something like out of the abyss, you could throw them in pretty much anywhere. They'd make great prison guards for some kind of demonic prison, or even just great guards in general for a particularly powerful creature that has enlisted them. And that's the great thing about demons as well, is because they can be summoned, of course, by powerful wizards. Maybe there's some kind of wizard NPC in your game who has, like, a wizard tower or some kind of castle, and he has arrow demons that he's summoned and is controlling at the outpost on top of the walls and that kind of thing. And maybe if one of these creatures manages to break free from its summoner for whatever reason, as demons are ought to do, uh, and it's just kind of roaming around the wilderness, it's possibly causing a huge problem for like hunters in the area and stuff. It's just killing a lot of the game or killing anyone who goes into the forest really. And no one really knows what's going on. Maybe in town people think that there's some kind of person out there doing this because of course they're not seeing like claw attacks. They're just seeing arrows flying in from the forest and they don't know who's behind this. Maybe they even think it's a group of people because of the frequency of the arrow attacks like multiple arrows being fired at the same time at different targets and that kind of stuff. And then of course the party goes to investigate and they find an arrow demon with a cult devoted to it or something like that. And if you want to use one of these guys as an NPC, maybe he's some kind of assassin who's been sent from the far plains to take down one of your players or just a different person in the world that the party then has to get in between those two things happening and fight off the arrow demons. Or if you just really like this concept but you don't like using them as demons, I am a huge fan of just reskinning things. So if you want to have like a golem who has four arms and fires two bows, you can use literally the exact same stats, just maybe change up the way some of the things are worded and of course change what the creature looks like when you're describing it to your players. Because of the whole theme of archery, you could even spin these guys as some sort of fey who live on the threshold between the fey wild and some forest and the material plane. And maybe they're guardians, maybe they come to the material plane to hunt, who knows what they do, but they could be interesting fey creatures for sure. In any case, I think these guys are fantastic creatures. They make a great addition for any time you need an otherworldly soldier or just any kind of interesting archer type NPC or creature. This guy has been around for a while, so if you actually have used this against your players in a past version of D&D, or maybe you've had it used against you, I'd love to hear about it. Definitely tell me about that in the comments below. And while we're down there, of course, in the description, you can find the stat block or the link to the uh, Google document where I have all of this information that you will need to run this creature filled out there. 
And of course, if you are one of my fantastic patrons, you will get the Monster Manual style stat block for this posted on the Patreon page as well. In any case, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. Until then.